Yep. Give me a nod yeah, when you're ready. Like four, four, Junior's four, four, ready. Four. Stand by. Hey everyone, this is Matt Gunlock from the 3GIQ Podcast. I'm here with my co-host Frank Gow, and we have Jason Byerly from Zoo City Armory. Uh, this is going to be a special episode, you know, talking all about the Zoo City Brawl. Uh, but I, I got to ask, you know, you've been a very busy individual the past, you know, month, if not longer. Um, you know, you're, you've been building your matches, your monthly matches, and then, you know, you came up to my retirement last week, which was amazing. I really appreciate that. And then this week you've been building again and you're prepping for the Memorial three gun. And for those that don't know, Jason is the designer uh, of all the stages behind Memorial three gun. He's the brainchild. So if you love Memorial three gun, you're going to, you're going to love the brawl. Uh, But I got to ask you, Jason, where did the idea from the brawl come from? The idea came from uh, about, I don't know, a couple, five or six months ago, uh, some scuttlebutt come down that something might be going on at Benning. And as a contingency, Buddy Brown and myself discussed if something does happen, what could we do to fill that gap? And um, it was at the time, it was just scuttlebutt. And so it was just kind of us just talking on the side about it. And then when it came down that Benning had canceled, we immediately jumped into action. Buddy started making some phone calls. And within a day and a half, we had lined it up and had the uh, fall brawl kind of set up at Clinton House, um, at least in, in, in theory. And within a few more days after that, we had confirmed, solidified the deal with Clinton House and kind of got the ball rolling on how we would do it and expectations, expectation management, um, and, you know, getting it out there. Um, so we, we wanted to, to, to kind of fill that end of the year last match kind of, uh, void that was created. Um, you know, it, it, it was, it was kind of a, um, disappointment when Benning canceled it. So, you know, our initial knee jerk reaction is, Hey, let's fill this void. So um, that's what buddy Brown and I came up with. And that's kind of it's the birth child of it. And we wanted it to, to uh, choose Clinton house because um, Memorial was going to be at, at, in Maxton at Griffin group. We had run the uh, battle for the South at Maxton and Griffin group. So um, that's why we chose to go to Clinton house. Yeah, it's kind of like preserving, uh, preserving land so it doesn't get overused. You know, it's yeah. kind of like I guess the best way I could put it is like, you know, we used to have the F and H matches up at up at Peacemaker National Training Center, and that's like a that that was like a sacred place. Everybody's like, this is the best place to go and compete at, and everything. Well, then like it kind of turned into whenever I moved up here. I was competing once or twice a month up at Peacemaker. So then it just kind of became one of those new norms. It just, you know, you knew what to expect. You knew what to look out for. And it's just preserving the sanctity of the land and not making it a norm. So people don't get bored behind it. So, no, I, I can completely understand that. And I, I got to say, like, you know, being down at, at the battle for the South, you know, you guys killed that, you know, and I would say, that quickly became known as one of the best matches of the year, especially a season starter. Like that was, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was, uh, it was going to be a tough, uh, tough way to compete with how we built Memorial last year and how well everything went with Memorial. And then uh, Buddy Brown, myself, John Sherbert, and a few other people got together for the battle for the South and, 
we were man, we managed to put down an even better match. Um, wasn't sure how we were, how we did it, but, uh, we managed to put down even, at least in my opinion, a better match, uh, than we had put down for Memorial. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how many times I can recreate that magic, but, um, I'm, I'm trying each time I do. So, uh, so yeah, it was, uh, a, a really good match out there. Um, the winds obviously and unseasonably cold and the winds kind of whoop some butts for the battle for the South, but it was, uh, it was a good match. I got, you just reminded me of something, uh, for those that don't know, and that are going to be, I think everybody that's going to be attending the brawl already know, but for those who, who are undecided right now, uh, John Sherbert's going to be down there putting, uh, the night match back on. So it's going to be new venue, you know, night match. So that's pretty not cool. Not at the brawl. Oh, that you're not? Be at the brawl. No, okay. that's at, uh, he's doing that for pro-am. That's he's right. He's going down and putting that out in for pro-am. No, we're not going to, there is no, not going to be any night portion of the, uh, the fall brawl. Okay. My mistake. I remember seeing it. Uh, it yep, is for yep, pro-am yep. though. Yep. 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 I'm glad we care- clarified. Yep, 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 yep. No, oh. we're uh, we're keeping it uh, pretty simple for the fall brawl as far as uh, other stuff going on. Uh, we're working uh, with a few other um, sponsors to get some demo stuff set up and get some side stages going. Um, hopefully, we can get some of that stuff going uh, for the match. That way, it gives competitors other things to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, for anyone listening, it sure puts on a phenomenal night match. I've shot the uh, Griffin Group night night match uh, once before. Also puts on the Griffin Group Rumble. So definitely good uh, good ones to go to. So you talked about this a little bit already, Jason, why you guys moved down to Clinton House. But in moving to a new venue, what are some considerations? And uh, I'll break this down in two parts. Uh, what are you excited about going to a new venue? And when you look at a new venue, what are some of the deal breakers, like some of the things that you you absolutely want to see in a new venue and some things that would possibly make you less excited to move to a new venue? So the Clinton House itself, uh, it's, it's not a new it's a new venue for Zoo City, but it's not a new venue for me. I have uh, helped build matches down there, probably at least three matches down there, three or four major matches down there. Um, Buddy Brown has built matches down there for years. So for us, it's not necessarily a new venue, uh, to build at. Um, but it is an exciting venue, uh, venue because their topography out there lends to so many different style of stages and, uh, they have so many new bays now. And, um, so we're able to give, uh, the competitor not only natural terrain and long range and jungle runs but we're able to give them a base style as well that uh, kind of gives a, a, a full all around that I like to build all around match. Um, I don't like when one match is just strictly all terrain, all, all natural terrain. It's nice, but I like a little base stuff here and there. It kind of, you know, breaks up the tempo a little bit because on natural terrain, you're very, a lot of times it's very North South, not a whole lot of East and West. Um, because you just don't have those left and right limits uh, of berms. So bays give you those left and right limits where you can do a little more east and west style building and option base matches and things like that. But um, the uh, uh, and, and that's where Clinton House offers that. Um, the fact that the this, this stages can be so spread out, their natural terrain does lead, lend you to having some left and right limits you you you've got nobody left and right because it's such a big sprawling place um so but that goes back to the challenges of the clint house it's such a big place that when you're building the match if you don't take it with you it is literally a 30 minute turnaround to go and get what you left and come back because you're if you're not in the bays you're at one limit or the other. And it is, it's a, it's a, it's a trek out there. And so when we go out there to build, we are, we are literally coming off the build of Memorial and the hosting of, or not the hosting, but the, the uh, facilitating of Memorial. And the week after we're tearing down Memorial, we're loading it into a U-Haul and 
taking it all to Clinton House. So we're logistically, we're loading up all the steel, all the walls, all the wall stands, the entire match we're loading up and transferring down to Clinton House. And I immediately start the build there within the next week of that for uh, the fall brawl. So that's the challenges that it, it, I, I have in front of me because of Clinton's house geographical location from Memorial. It's another two, two and a half hours. Then getting down there, taking all the stuff out of the U-Haul, um, separating it, getting it into piles that are going to, uh, to each plan stage. I'm going to have some of the stages planned so I can just take what I need and go out there and work and build. And then we're going to have to, uh, depending on what areas are used and what areas are cut, uh, because I'm not sure what area Donnie's going to use for his pro-am, but we don't plan on using the same exact areas. We plan on using different areas. So I may have to cut some stuff and bush hogs and things. So there's logistically, there are some challenges um, going down there. I personally live three hours from there. So that is a logistical challenge into itself is when I go down, I go down for a day that morning, I stay overnight, I work the next day, then I drive back home because I still have to build matches here for our local matches. And I have a life here, obviously, and, you know, I, kids and whatnot. So um, it's it, it, it has its own host of logistical challenges. I think that answered your questions. It sure does. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So I, I got to ask, uh, you know, for those of us that shoot Zoo City uh, matches over the weekend um, and have been to Memorial, been to Battle for the South, and have kind of gotten to know you as a person, Jason, and everybody that works with you, uh, what would you say gives Zoo City 3 Gun their personality? I think it's not – it's definitely not me. I don't have any personality. Uh, it's definitely – the it's definitely the the people we have working with us buddy brown chris brower david hoeing sean um uh donley um john sherbert you know just the diversity of people that we have working with us uh chris has a full-time job he can't always help uh sean has a full-time job he can't always help buddy has a semi full-time job if that's what you want to call it um so but buddy's also got other you know, things where he can't help. Sherb, Sherb's got a full-time job. So really it kind of falls on me. This is my full-time job to, to, to get down there and do it. So, but when it comes to the matches and the, the culminating event of the match and Zoo City in itself, it's the diversity of people. Um, Buddy offsets any of my brashness um, because he, he, Buddy can get along with anybody. He can, hold a conversation with anybody. Um, he's great at mitigating issues. Um, that's why I always, always, always have Buddy as a range master. Sherb is good at it too. Sherb is, uh, he's, he's, he's not as quite as uh, proficient as Buddy at it, but uh, Sherb is very good at being professional, uh, both Buddy and Sherb when it comes to handling the matches. Um, Chris, Chris does a great job at doing the logistical side of it, of checking people in. As long as uh, everything is there for him and I don't kind of screw him on the back end, no pun intended there, on uh, logistics side, Chris is – Chris handles the, the the you know, managing of signing people in, getting registration done. And just in general, Chris has always got a, a bubbly personality and talking to people. He can talk to anybody. He's a salesman at the end of the day, so he can talk to anyone. Um, and, you know, uh, Sean – Sean's got a great personality. He deals – He's a, a minister and he runs a, a not-for-profit and he's great at talking to people. And um, so, you know, it's, it's a, the diversity of Zoo City is what I think uh, makes us moderately successful that we are. Not to mention, I, you know, I have to highlight the ROs. Granted, I, I, I am one of your ROs most of the time. But besides me, you have some awesome ROs, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Not to, not to leave the ROs out. The ROs are, are – the they are the backbone of the match. The match – any match cannot happen without ROs. And a good match is not a good match without good ROs, um, yeah. period. Bob I don't Osbeck. Care what match it is. Yeah. You know, you got big lips Bob Osbeck. Uh, I have to always highlight his lips because they're big and he beautiful. Is, he is always a pleasure at – 
at the end of the day. Yes. <laughs> no yes. pun intended. He makes things he's he he makes things a lot better at the end of the day with those lips. Mm-hmm. And then you got Arch Bell, uh, Tony DePrima, Chris Wiseman, yeah. you know, Zach Smeltz, uh, you know, just a diversity. Brandon of, Wolf. Yeah, yeah, Brandon Wolf, like the diversity. It's, you know, people are dedicated. And I, I think it speaks to you, who you are and to the matches and how you take care of people is why people are drawn to you because they care. Like you put and, on well, something that you truly care about. We try to every chance we get to make sure the ROs have everything they need for, for Battle for the South and for Memorial last year. My whole intent of going down and building everything and getting it done before the match happened is so when the ROs shoot, they have the match of their own. That is my absolute main goal. Then it's the match, the match, the actual, because if the ROs have a good match, that means the match itself is going to be good because they're the ones who are proofing the match. So Memorial last year, we did have to reshoot one stage. We had to change one thing. Didn't necessarily want to, but we changed one thing. We had to reshoot one stage. It went smoothly, no issues, just other than the ROs had to reshoot that one stage. Battle for the South, the, the ROs shot the exact same match that the, the uh, competitors shot. Um, there we changed absolutely nothing. Um, and that was because myself, Buddy, and Sherb, put in the extra time, the extra work to prove, not really proof. We didn't prove anything. We just, we made sure everything was going to function the way it was supposed to. Any stage malfunction had a redundant system in place for every thrower we had. We had a redundant thrower sitting on the sidelines, ready to go. Every, anything that needed something redundant, any stick, any break stick, anything like that. We had a redundant system in place to make sure that the match was going to go smoothly not only for the competitors, but for the ROs. So taking care of the ROs on the match side of it, not only um, – not necessarily monetarily, but just taking care of them. We try to take care of them monetarily as best we can. Um, we always have an RO package. We provide them – we personally, for Zoo City, provide their ammo, not for Memorial. I'm not talking about Memorial this, but for, for us, for Zoo City, we provide um, the pistol ammo, rifle ammo, and shotgun ammo and a, a stipend um, to help offset their costs a little bit, as well as provide them a, an RO prize table, uh, you know, as, as best, obviously, as, as we can. And um, so we always try to take care of ROs. We always try to have them food, water, tents. Um, anytime they hit us on the radio, we are there within a minute to fix or adjudicate any issue we have to. Um, that way, it makes their life easier when they're working with the competitors. Um, that way they don't have to explain anything or, or do anything. All they have to do is their job, which is make the call, make sure everything's safe. And if there is a question with the call, they are um, calling us to come in and adjudicate what any, any call they make. Now makes, makes total sense. Uh, and that's and that's what I love about your matches. Everything is consistent from the RO shoot to the the main match. Um, there's everything is thought of before it is even brought up, which it's very rare. I think in most cases, we try to we try to to consider every what if. Um, luckily, Buddy and I have been around a long time to kind of deal with all the what ifs we haven't dealt with them, every single one of them, but we've dealt with a lot and the, the contingencies of what could happen, what would said person do on this stage, if this happens and how do we mit mitigate that and, and shrink the percentage of that happening. Uh, you're never going to knock it out hundred percent, but to reduce that percentage of uh, issues and problems and things, it, it takes a, you know, it takes a few people looking at a stage. Um, I've been doing this, building stages for a long time, and I'll go out and build a stage, and I'll have somebody come through, and I'm like, hey, tell me what you think about this. What do you see as being an issue? And that's kind of how I fix issues is having other people look at it because the way I see things is not always the way the competitor or every other competitor is going to see it. Although I try to, I can't see every single way, so I try to – 
to get somebody there, Buddy, John Sherbert, or another, somebody else to come in and say, hey, what do you see here as being an issue? If this happens, what happens here? You know, how can we, how, how can we mitigate this? No, so that's, uh, well, another thing I, I love is, uh, you know, at the brawl, you, you literally thought of everything like signs, like me and you were going over, well, what's going to be most, cl- what's going to clarify, like with signs, like a lot of matches, you know, they don't put signs out. And you even told me before, like one thing I always like, you know, wish people did was take the time and put signs out. So they knew where, you know, where registration was, where like stages one through three were, you know, five through six, what, whatever. And like, it went into detail of, Hey, you know, we're putting the arrow is facing this way. It's like, literally, like you said, thinking, trying to think of everything. So it's clear to everyone. Well, that's, I've been to a ton of matches and especially big sprawling matches, Clinton house, out in Texas, wherever, you know, wherever has big uh, acreage and you're having to sprawl out and go out, you know, signage is, is key because I know we got turned around at, at a couple of matches and we end up somewhere in a field somewhere and have to turn around and come back. Cause we, you know, and Clinton house is big and sprawling and you can get lost out there really quick because they have um, not only do they do three gun out there, but they have uh, a huge uh, sporting clays, uh, range out there. So there's all kinds of twists and turns and roads that take you down to sporting clay. So we want to make sure Buddy and I, when we went down and scouted the venue, we went on Google Maps and we plotted everywhere we were going to have signs, everywhere we were going to have direction signs and stage signs and saying stages one through three this way, stages uh, four through six this way, stages seven through nine this way. And then stage or directional signs in you know in between there stating where everything was at so people because out there you'll drive for a mile and still not hit the stage yet yeah. and think well, well shit i passed it you know i've missed the stage and you haven't so we we you know intermediate signs and big stage signs uh sherb's uh john sherbert's got big stage signs we're going to bring out and put on stages and that way everything is very definitive and you're not sitting here questioning and wondering where you're going because as you know at Clinton House transition between stages that's it's key that's part of that's time yeah that's time and time in a match that's that's all a match is is time time and stage time and we're getting in a time of year where there's only so much daylight to where you have to be on point with the with, with that time or you don't get you don't get it back well that and that leads to how we've decided to uh to do the 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 squatting so originally the intent was to do a and pm and have you know if we had the turnout have an a and pm set of squads well the turnout is is less than what we'd hope uh we're going to end up probably around 100 so um what we decided to do i sent out a survey we had two options our options were to uh, we already set the precedent by saying we're going to be a three-day match. So everybody's expectations were already, it was going to be a three-day match. So we decided to say, Hey, okay. With the turnout, we could reduce this to a two-day match and go five stages on Saturday and four on Sunday and really not change the timing on Sunday when we leave. Um, with the, the number of squads we have, the number of people or competitors we have. So we sent out a, a, um, survey to our competitors because that's really I don't I don't I can't really Joe Schpo who's not shooting the match I can't really take his consideration because he's not shooting the match so we only sent it to our competitors and we uh it was literally 50 50 down the line there were 50 percent that wanted to keep it a three day there were 50 percent that wanted a two day I see the merit in both but because we had already set the precedent at three days, that has value and weight to it. So we decided to keep it a three day and just keep it instead of doing AM PM, we're just going to shoot three stages a day. And I'm going to add a little bit more to the stages to give the shooters, the competitors a little bit more value to their shooting. Now I'm not saying I'm going to make it a, a drag your balls through glass match. I'm saying I'm going to add a few more targets here and there to add to the match to, 
to, to add a little bit more to it, to give you a little bit more long range, or if it's a bay stage, give you a little bit more going on in the bay. I'm not saying I'm going to add, you know, 15 more targets where you're just shooting to shoot. I don't like to run to run. I don't like to shoot to shoot. I like it to be a reasoning behind what we're doing. And it's like we've said before on the Battle for the South podcast was I like to create stages as a dance. I like to make it a dance, have a rhythm to it and multiple, multiple rhythms to what division you're shooting. And so um, that's how it's going to be. And that's how I'm uh, we're going to build it is. Um, but so giving going back to the, the timing of it, now that we're only shooting three stages per day, that means in a typical day at that time period, there's 10 hours of daylight. Well, you can't count the first 30 minutes and you can't count the last 30 minutes because we're in jungle runs. You lose that light in the jungle run, you can't see what you're doing. So really, we only have nine hours. So at three stages a day, if you figure it's going to take probably with the movement aspect and everything from, from when the squad gets there to when the squad hits the next stage, it's going to take about two hours. So usually takes about 30, an hour and 30 minutes for most matches. Um, is what you kind of shoot for giving the daylight, but we, we extend it out. That gives us a little flexibility there. So if they move in an hour and 45 minutes, you know, that gives us our little flex there that gives the shooters time to transition, get their stuff back out of their cars, work to work, whatever they got to work with, walk stage, walk the stages, look at the stages, do what they've got to do to laser targets. And then, so our intent is now to be, uh, roughly if they're shooting three stages a day, that'll be six hours. That gives them time to get on a stage, do what they've got to do, shoot the match, and then we can start a little later. So instead of starting at 8 o'clock in the morning, we start at 9 o'clock, and we're still done by 3 o'clock. Oh, that's beautiful. And, and we're, we're, the shooters don't have to get up at the crack of dawn. We don't have to worry about fog or as much worry as much about fog. We don't have to worry about lighting issues. It gives the shoot competitors as much value for light and – daytime as we can it also gives them the opportunity to go to any side stage and get you know jeremy uh um, uh, swafford's going to be there with food gives them time to go you know to get some food from uh, jeremy and and whatnot and we're talking about maybe doing something saturday night uh buddy and i still have that kind of working a, a plan for that maybe um but uh that's the intent of the match now is to go to shooting three stages per day. And it also takes a little bit of the burden off our ROs. We're not blowing our ROs out by running uh, six stages during the day. And they're just, they're hustling people through. It gives them a chance to kind of, you know, especially on more natural terrain stages, there's a lot more movement. So they get worn out faster. Uh, so it gives them a chance not, not to wear them out as bad during the match. You've thought of everything. I, I, I try to, uh, you know, I'm not, and, and again, not every, I call it the Amazon effect. Not everybody's going to be happy. I don't care how great a product is. Somebody on Amazon is, is not happy with it. So, and, and it's, you're going to have that. I'm trying to, I can't make everybody happy, but I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to give a good match and provide every aspect of shooting. I'm trying to make sure there is no stage that's the same. Um, and there's, there's stages that are accuracy driven and stages that are thought driven stages that are speed driven. Um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to give everybody the, the best of everything that I can in the venue that the venue allows me to give. I'm sure your shooters are extremely grateful, um, that you're putting that much time and energy and passion into it. Uh, hopefully people listen to this and we get a lot more participants as well. So I um, wanted to ask, though, what are the rule sets going to be for the brawl? The rule sets are going to be just like for Battle for the South. Um, we may use some slings. Uh, we're still kind of throwing that up in there, but we did put it out that we may use slings. Uh, it will be only on one or two stages, and that's due to to the staging of guns. If it's easier to sling the gun, than, uh, and it's only for rifle, and if it's easier to, to, to sling the gun than to go walk 30 yards down and stage it, then walk 30 yards back, then that's what we'll do. But um, I try to mitigate that as much as I can um, on the use of slings because 
Uh, that's not the necessarily the type of match we are, but if we need to use them, we will. Um, the rule set, like I said, will be the same as Battle for the South. Uh, we'll have the same divisions, uh, the open division, the carry optics division, the heavy division, and the tack ops division. Um, we toyed around with added the limited division in, but they're just like heavy. I've got so few shooters shooting it. Um, that I didn't know if it was worth putting in. Uh, Buddy and I talked about it. Um, if we had enough people that wanted it, I would absolutely put it in. Um, I would just have to have enough people wanting it. Like heavy, I think I've got three guys in heavy. Um, I wish we had more. I wish we had more guys shooting heavy. I kind of opened up that division a little bit so more people would shoot heavy, but we're, we're still not getting as many heavy shooters um, as we would like. Um, are you going to – I have to ask, are you guys uh, – and you probably said it, are you doing a carry optics type division again? Yes, yes. That's one of the four divisions we're doing. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I I get a lot of people um, – you know, there's several matches out there that aren't doing the carry optics division, and everybody's like, man, I got to switch back to irons now. Man, it sucks. I got to switch back to irons. Um, and I've actually had a couple guys that are going to run my shotgun or, and our backup open shotgun and just run open or a couple guys actually have thought about just running, going to open and running their tack off shotgun. Um, you know, obviously filling the tube all the way up, uh, just so they don't have to switch back to irons. And, uh, for these other matches that obviously don't hold carry optics divisions, <clears throat> but we've had tremendous success with our local matches and, we had really good success for Battle for the South. It wasn't obviously as big as Tack Ops because that's a staple that's been there for years, but it was still a good percentage of the shooters shot uh, carry optics. And um, right now, I'm not sure the breakdown. I'd have to look and see. Um, but I think there's 20 or so, 26 maybe, that are shooting carry optics. Uh, so it's, it's not a, a bad percentage. Um, we've had so many guys switch to open that shoot at our range. Um, we've sold, I think we've sold at least 10, 10 dissonance this year or more. Um, I'd have to ask Lan or look back at our, our records, but I think we've sold at least 10 dissonance this year alone. So we've had a ton of guys switch over to open. That's awesome. So, so um, but yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask uh, locations uh, to lodge and eat. Is there lodging on site, uh, camping on site, hotels in the area? Uh, I know you talked about Jeremy Swalford already, but food at the event. And, like, what, where's good places to, to get food around the area? So there is a hotel right uh, down the road from Clinton House. I can't remember. It's either Comfort Inn or a quality – that's not a quality inn. Um, it's not a meth hotel. It's a uh, um, comfort suites or something like that. I can't remember. It's a big hotel. It's huge. Yep. Um, so it is It is literally five minutes down the road from Clinton House. Um, I'll send out a, uh, which most people know about it anyway, that's coming to the match. But um, they usually always have rooms available. And in that time of year, I don't see their reason why they wouldn't. Um, I've never been down there and not seen a room available. Um so uh, they'll have rooms available and I, there's other places around there. There is camping on site at Clinton house. I know Clinton house is trying to have, um, they have camping available. They're trying to have uh, electricity spots. I think they have like four right now, but I think they're trying to add maybe six to 10 before the fall brawl, but I'm not a hundred percent if they're going to get those in or not. Um and there's others, an HOA down, a couple exits down. Um, so I don't think they're going to have any lodging in the uh, clubhouse or anything because not only do they have fall brawl going on, but they have uh, a big sporting clay shoot that weekend that's going on. So there's going to be a lot going on at the Clinton house that weekend. I, I'm pretty sure they have one of their big sporting clay shoot because we couldn't use one of the areas because of the, the sporting clay shoot. So uh, one thing I'll say is like, for those who haven't been to the Clinton house, just be careful with where you're driving. Uh, it is like, there are some tight areas like 
that you have to drive through and over bridges. So just be patient. Don't hurry up. Uh, you know, take your time. They have, they've improved the roads down there a lot. They've done a lot of uh, improvements down there. Now the roads going past the bridge, they have improved it some, but it, it's still, if it rains, it is, it's, it's sketchy. Um, yeah. Especially if you're in a car. Uh, um, if you're low to the ground, you'll you'll bottom out in a couple spots if if it's raining. Um, so uh, you know that that is the only downside. But that's it's not going to rain, so we're not even going to talk about it anymore. Um, <clears throat> so, but the they they've done a lot of improvements to the roads out there. They've done they've dumped a ton of gravel. Um, and done a, a lot of stuff, not only with their opening up and creating a bunch of more bays, uh, but they've, they've graveled a lot and done a lot of, uh, of improvements out there. Um, now, where we're going to be out past the bridge, there'll be three stages out there. Um, we're going way out on the stages we're building. We're going to be actually at the, the end of the road where I don't know where Donnie's building, but we've there hasn't been stages built out there since the old, way old three gun nation days. Okay. Um, so I, I don't, like I said, I don't know where Donnie's building his match. Um, so we may be strumping over some of the same area, but I'm not a hundred percent because I won't know till I go to pro-am where the stages are out there. But um, on the other side, um, we're, we're using, um, Two of the areas that have been used before, but then I'm kind of getting a new jungle run out there in a different area uh, on the backside back there. So, but it's the upside to the way we're doing the the squatting is on that day, the three stages you shoot that day will be in one area. We're calling them areas A, B, and C. A is out uh, one side, B is the bays, C is out the other side. So you will shoot all three in that area for that day. The next day you'll move to the next area. You shoot all three. The final day you'll move to the, the third area and shoot all three in that area. So you're not having to drive across the facility. You literally drive out to that one area. Um, you will have to drive from bay to bay but, or stage to stage, not bay to bay, but stage to stage. And But it won't be – you won't be driving the entire facility. Nice. Um, are you guys going to be using the shoot house again? Yes, we're using that bay. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to use that. Mike Sexton said we could uh, make a, small changes to that as far as the shoot house. And I just got to get down there and then really kind of look at it and develop how I want to use that. Um, it's been used about the same way for every match that I've least seen online um, that's been down there uh, recently. So... I'm going to probably change some things up and at least in how I design it. Um, I may use it as a auxiliary part of the stage, or I may use it part of the main stage. I just got to kind of get down there and get a feel for what I can do within the stage safely. Um, like we're moving, I'm bringing a whole U-Haul, the biggest U-Haul I can get full of barrels because they don't have any barrels down there. So not only am I bringing all my steel, I'm, we're buying new barrels, or not new barrels, we're buying barrels, 55-gallon drums, to take uh, down there. And um, so I can, because in my opinion, and this is how I build matches, barrels are almost a must-have to build a match. It protects your walls. It creates uh, um, concealment for targets. Um, it just creates a lot of... Uh, stuff you need for matches and it can absorb a hit from just about actually can absorb a hit from anything you're going to shoot slug birdshot rifle um without destroying your prop so getting those down there setting up the base stages um which that's what i work in anyway with our range or base stages um so i that that'll be no problem i'm actually building the base stages last i think that I think that's what um, Mike Sexton needs me to do because they have stuff going on down in the base. Sorry. Um, so, who who's making the trophies for the uh, for the award ceremony? So, what we're doing for the trophies, we're doing uh, wrestling belts. Um, we're getting those made with a logo on them, and we were going to have uh, Will. Uh, I'm going to completely tear up his name. Jessica, Jeske, Jeske, Janeski. 
Um, Just go with Will. William, yeah, Will. Will. Will did uh, did our axes and stuff for last year for Battle for the South. He's doing them for Memorial this year. Uh, we've got a plan for Battle for the South next year. We've got some pretty cool trophies for next year that he's going to do. But this year for this this event, um, he he's he's so busy with what he's doing, and we wanted to change it up a little bit. So uh, Chris uh, Brower Snappy had the idea of doing wrestling belts. And because it's fall brawl, it's kind of a fight thing. So we said, okay, well, let's do wrestling belts and fighting belts. So we're going to do uh, wrestling belts, and we're going to have big belts done up and um, do it like that as the, the trophies for each division. And uh, um, then we'll do uh, acrylic trophies for uh, uh, second, third, and fourth place. But for the, for the top of each division – we're going to do uh, big wrestling trophies as well, or big wrestling belts for the trophies. I'm all about it. Um, in terms of swag trophies, like the wrestling mm-hmm. belt it has a bit of an attitude to it. That's what they gave out for a uh, dragon's cup out there in Texas. And everyone mm-hmm. really liked those trophies. So yeah, I, I'm all for it. Yeah. We, you know, it's kind of, uh, I mean, you, at some point you're going to copy somebody. Uh, you can't come up with a, you know, a million new ideas, but for our event, and we wanted to be different for Battle for the South. Uh, we chose to do that. And um, I think for the Battle for the South, if Will can get what we what we have the idea of doing done, it's going to be really cool for that. Um, but we'll, that, that'll come out later on down the road whenever we, uh, we open up Battle for the South. Um, so uh, that's probably going to open, uh, I want to say maybe uh, either the beginning of October or the beginning of November. We haven't decided yet. We're still – Buddy and I and Sherb are still talking about that. <clears throat> so, um, but uh, that's that's what we're doing for trophies and awards. And um, uh, so, uh, and we're going to recognize the categories as well. Top lady, um, top junior, uh, top military, top LEO, um, things like that. So, uh, and I, I'm not sure if we're doing top senior or not. I got to ask Buddy what we're doing for well, the, all the categories to be 100%. So, don't quote me on – on that, but um, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what we're doing. And uh, I assume Jeremy's going to be serving food for the ceremony, and it's going to be down at the clubhouse as well. No, it's uh, yes, Jeremy. I'm I'm sure Jeremy is going to be. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what we discussed. Uh, unfortunately, because they have that big sporting clay shoot, we are not going to be at the clubhouse. We're going to have to be under the. The, they built a new paddock down there that's got a uh, – um, basically, it's a big, uh, nice um, outdoor covering. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to be under that. Uh, hopefully, we'll get done early enough. We won't have to utilize lights. But if we have to utilize lights, we'll have lights out there and everything. Um, but that's just uh, – being the nature of how short a notice it was, they already had an event there, and we're just kind of – we're kind of stuck with that. That's kind of – where it's going to be. Um, uh, I was hoping the sporting clays would be done by the time we were done, but they're not. And so we, we're just going to have to, to do it under the, the overhang. It's where Donnie did the, the for a Tar Heel uh, match, he did his awards at is where we'll be doing them. Okay. Now, it's, th- this whole event sounds really amazing, and hopefully I can be down there for it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hopefully you can. We're trying to, uh, uh, just like for Battle for the South, um, our long-range targets are going to be three to four MOA. Uh, we're putting uh, um, we're putting backers behind the targets so you can see them. Um, I'm going to try and minimize the silhouette as much as I can so you can see as much uh, um, splash as you can to make corrections. But given the location and where it's at, um, we don't want to have to go down and paint targets after every squad. So we're putting uh, chloroplast, white chloroplast behind targetry. Um, and uh, th- like I said, it's going to be three to four MOA targets. We plan, I think there's one or two spots. I plan on going out uh, just like for Battle for the South, about five, 565, 570. Um, I don't think I'm going out much past that. I might go to 600. It just depends on how the stage plans out. Uh, or plays out when I get out there um, and what if there's the leaves are off the trees enough to me to open up a few spots and 
and get out there and, and see what I can do. Um, the nice part about out there is, like I said, the topography. We can shoot across what we consider valleys, you know, uh, uh, hill, hilltop to hilltop and, you know, maybe get some turbulent wind pushing through there or something like that and changing the angles of the shots where I can shoot you down into a valley and then work you up a hill or, or something like that. And um, at least for the long range and things. And um, we'll probably have some pretty good slug shots out there, but again, it'll be on, it won't be on small, tiny targets. It'll be on 18 by 24 stuff. That's, that's doable. That's, mm-hmm. that's absolutely hundred percent doable. Not, not a 120, 20 yard shot on a, you know, 12 by 12 plate. It'll be on a 18 by 24 and we'll do, you know, I, I probably won't put slugs past 90, no, no more than a hundred yards. And they'll, like I said, they'll be on huge plates. So I'll make it a challenging, but absolutely doable match. No, I'm looking forward to it. If I can be there, like I say, yeah. I wholeheartedly plan on being there. I hope, I hope you can. I hope you can. Um, but before we end it, I just wanted to ask, is there anything else you'd like to say before we, uh, we end this? Um, one of the, uh, one of the things of switching to the plan, the, 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 the squad planning that we have, it has reduced the number of slots we have, obviously, um, by half. So we have now slated nine squads. If we have to go to 13, we'll go to 13. Right now we're, we're at 12. If we are, we're at eight squads at 12 right now, we've got a ninth squad available. Uh, if we have to go to 13 per squad, we will. Um, that leaves to 117 total shooters. So um, we are currently, I believe, at 96. So we don't have a lot more openings available. Um, so we're, uh, that's where we, we – I don't necessarily want to go to 14 and 15 because obviously that goes back to timing. Now people are standing around on a stage for a really long time, and uh, that, that tends to – I know when I have to sit on a stage for an hour and, or two hours, three hours, I'm just starting to get a little cranky. Um, so I definitely don't want that to happen. Uh, so we're trying to reduce the total number of, uh, uh, competitors per squad. That may, that means, you know, reset can be done. The, the shooter, the on deck shooter and the shooter just got done shooting. It, it can do what they need to do. And then there's plenty of people to reset and do what, the, do what needs to happen. But it's also not so many people The people are sitting around waiting, pissed off that it's taking, three hours two and a half hours to shoot a stage yeah i like how you do it they're in they're out and they move on it makes it a more pleasurable experience yeah and you know i don't necessarily i'm not a 100 percent thrilled that it's only three stages a day but if if i can balance the 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 shooting portion of it and make it a good match um and make it equitable for everybody and everybody has a good time, um, you know, then that's, that's a success for me. I would honestly, you know, like to have more stages during the day. Um, but that I'm just, that's the match director in me. Um, mm-hmm. So, but as a competitor, I want to get in, I want to shoot my stage. I want to do the work I got to do to help my other competitors. And then I don't want to sit there and wait for hours, uh, you know, on a stage. I want to, I want to go, I want to shoot, I want to do the work. And I want the, the the stages to move as a competitor and then go home or go back to my hotel, go eat and be ready for the next day. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look at this as both a, a, a match director and a competitor. So that way it's equitable for everybody. No, I, I think everybody's going to notice that. I mean, you already have a really good reputation about you. So I think people know what to expect whenever they come to a Jason Byerly match. Um, so thank you for, everything. well, just to, just to clarify this, this is not a Jason Barley match. There are other people. This is a Zoo yes. city match. This is a Sorry. John Sherbert. This is a buddy Brown. This is, you know, all the, everybody that helps put this match on, uh, you know, this is not just me. And I, I do not, I don't even want any of the credit. I just, I just want it to be a good match. I don't, I don't care about the credit. I just care about it being a good match. Um, and an equitable match and everybody and enjoy it. And the, not only just the competitors, but the ROs, um, I, the ROs don't enjoy it. They're not going to come back and work for you. So 
you got to make sure everybody enjoys the match. So um, just to put that out there, you know, it, this isn't about me. This is, this is about everybody. No, that's, that's good of you. I think everybody sees it. But um, listeners, we hope you have enjoyed this. We hope uh, you fill up those last slots. There's not many left. Sign up while you can. Um, and we're waiting to for you to listen to the next one. Tell us what you think. If you have any questions about the battle for the South, please reach out to Jason or Buddy. Uh, if you have any questions for the podcast, please reach out to Frank and myself. Uh, other than that, have a good one. We look forward to the next time. Thank you, guys.